listen to this if i be a man of god listen and i'm not faking what i'm doing there are pastors who are faking it you can't fake it and make it you can't fake testimonies happening here now listen to this anyone holding your turn around if they don't release it this week they go for you Listen, no, listen to me. No matter where they are from, no matter which cave they are hiding, listen, there are people who can speak like this because they don't know who they are. I'm not riding on the wings of Bishop Oedeko. No! I have a clear, clean calling. Now, here's a big problem. Many, many charismatic ministries, most of the next generation won't see the nation except as a change all this hand over to your son hand over to your daughter is no ministry it's not it's not <laughs> it's not it's not it's not ministry no plan or nothing and no process only between you and your son that's not life they find a process if God picks that son, it may not be the fault, it may not be the second. Maybe it's not the fault. But it's not a uh, family inheritance. It's not uh, chieftain's title in your, your village's process in the spirit. If the man gets it, it will still be subject to vetting of the body responsible. Hello. Shalom, brethren. Please quickly subscribe if you are yet to. Um, so, um, recently, news have been flying about Bishop David Oyedepo's second son, Pastor Isaac Oyedepo, who resigned from the Living Faith Church to start his own ministry. And many questions have been asked, questions like, was there a quarrel between father and son, or is Pastor Isaac Oyedepo jealous of his elder brother, uh, Pastor David Oyedepo Jr., who is currently taking over from his father, while uh, Isaac Oyedepo was taken from the U.S. headquarters and made general youth pastor in Nigeria. Now, briefly, we will talk about Pastor David Oyedepo's ministry and if it is in line with God's plan as he claims it is. And um, I will also give you 100% proof from the scripture that Bishop David Oyedepo's ministry is not in accordance to scriptures and thus it is not a true ministry of Christ. I will tell you the reason why Pastor Isaac Oyedepo left the Living Faith Church and then finally I will close up with the future of Pastor Isaac Oyedepo and what he has to do if he wants to get back on track with God. Now, this channel is used to open the eyes of many sleeping Christians, so before you argue with me or attack me, pick up your Bible, be sincere, follow me with an open mind and let's get into the gist of this video. Let's go! Now, the first video I did about Bishop David Oyedepo, I came under fire and many criticized me, including my very own brethren. But I will quickly play a video for you now where Bishop David Oyedepo talked about his experience when God commissioned him and the commission that was given to him. I want you to listen to him carefully, note every detail because when we get back, we will come to a conclusion on the possible reason why Pastor Isaac Oyedepo resigned from his father's ministry and some other gray areas that many people have failed to notice. You never forget an encounter with God in a hurry. Every genuine encounter with God lives with you for life. It lives with you for life. About this time, 28 years ago, I was in the midst of that vision. And that vision began with a word from the Lord. Seek a quiet place. I want to speak to you. It was in the evening of the 1st of May, 1981. And it began by the word. All things work together to the advantage of them that love the Lord. I was out in Elisha to visit a friend and got to his door and discovered that he was away on weekend and in those days you put something on your door that you are away away on weekend and as i got to that place and i would have been discouraged because there was a lot of challenges that time at modakeke if a crisis but and i had many friends in Elisha i could have been with and relaxed myself as i turned back from that door the lord said to me all things work together to the advantage i had it from his mouth the lord appears by his word 
to the advantage of them that seek the Lord and are called according to his purpose. He said, thank you, Lord. He said, now seek a quiet place. I want to talk to you. Got me into that hotel, powerful hotel. And the name of the hotel does not reflect what it is. It is called International Hotel, and so I had a feeling I was going to have some good rest. But that was that International Hotel, everything was local. And as I knelt down to say, thank you, Jesus, I was caught up to heaven. And I stayed in that vision for 18 solid hours. And I saw an array of men and women groaning and agonizing for rescue. The kind of cries I've never heard in my natural life. Emotion swept all over me. I began crying with them. I saw the battered, beaten, ruffled, tattered, deformed, the blind, the lame. I saw them groaning and agonizing for rescue. And I began crying, why Lord? And the voice of the Lord came to me saying, but from the beginning it was not so. And I said, why Lord? Hear me tonight, whatever was not so from the beginning in your life must go back to where it came from. He said, but from the beginning it was not so. And I said, but why Lord? What is all this? He said, and now the hour has come. To liberate the world from all oppressions of the devil. By the preaching of the word of faith. And I'm sending you to undertake this task. That was the day the mandate was delivered. I'm sent as a covenant messenger of liberation. Now, quoting Bishop David Oyedepo word for word, he said... That what God called him to do on earth was to, and I quote, liberate the world from all oppressions of the devil. And that is to be done through the preaching of the word of faith. Now, I am surprised that many did not analyze that statement and have been in this man's ministry for years, giving huge sums of money and believing that they are in the will of God. Now, how can God send a man to do a job that has been done already over 2,000 years ago? It confuses me. Because Jesus has already liberated the world from all the oppressions of the devil through his death on the cross. You can see that in Luke chapter 4 verse 18. Jesus said it point blank. Jesus has done it already. So how can God send a man to come and redo what Jesus has already done? Except he is indirectly trying to say that Jesus did not finish the work. But the Bible disagrees because the Bible recorded that on the cross, Jesus said that it is finished. So nobody can do it better than Jesus, who was God in the flesh. Now, he said God told him to liberate people by preaching faith, the word of faith. Now, what is faith? Faith is belief. Faith is the totality of the word of God because the Bible says we have one faith. So let's first agree that maybe God told him to liberate people, like he said, from satanic oppression. So, and he told us, that uh, by preaching faith, he's going, to, he's going to do that. Now, if that is true, then what God told him to do is to point the people to the Christian faith, which is believing in the finished work of Christ. Because this thing he said God told him to do, Christ has done it already. So if Christ is calling you to, if God actually called you to come and liberate the people, he's actually telling you to point them to the finished work, point them to the person that have done it before. So by preaching the word of God to them, let them know that this thing has been done already. So when you are echoing it to them, you are also pointing them to one who has liberated them already. So they get liberated in that process. So and if you are to preach the finished work of Christ, that means you are to preach the 100% word of God. You are not to take part of it and leave, another, and leave the remaining part. No. Now for those of you that do not know that Bishop David Oedekbo is not preaching the totality of the word of God, I have a shocking video for you. So I want you to really watch it, and when we get back, I will shock you with more information. Somebody asked me, why is it that in your church they don't talk about, um, you know, rapture? It's not that we don't believe it, but we are not sent to preach it. It's not everything you believe you preach. Everyone is assigned to a particular way, to a particular assignment. Why is it that we don't preach about hellfire? Don't we believe it? Believe it very well. Satan and all who follow him will go there. But we are not sent to preach it. 
Now, that was Bishop David Abioye, the second in command to Bishop David Oyedepo in the Living Faith Church. So, and in that video, he was telling you that the Living Faith Church is not called, is not called to preach the rapture or hellfire. No wonder you can hardly find a member of the Living Faith Church who truly has the life of Christ. Now, I want to ask a quick question to those of you who follow Bishop David Oyedepo blindly or who goes to this ministry blindly without reading your Bible. How can anyone liberate the world from the oppression of the devil without preaching rapture? I want to ask you, and I want you to, to answer that question with all sincerity. How can you liberate people from the world without warning them from hellfire? Yes, you know, somebody is walking into fire, and you say you want to save that person. And you are not telling the person that there is a fire that you are walking into. What is a better liberation than delivering somebody from hellfire or warning somebody from entering, entering into hell? Now, they say they are called to preach faith, right? As a Christian, what is the greatest thing that faith is needed for? Is it not rapture? Because faith and rapture goes hand in glove. Are you understanding where this is going? The Bible says the first thing Jesus said after his commission coming out of the wilderness was that the kingdom of God is at hand, which is rapture. Now, when he sent his disciples to preach, he told them to preach about the rapture and the kingdom of God. That was what Jesus told the disciples to do. So why are we not seeing the same thing with you? Or has God changed? So if you are accumulating your definition of faith, and you are preaching, teaching people faith without putting rapture in their mind, that means you are preparing a people who will remain on earth for the great tribulation. No wonder Bishop David Oedipo is building an ark on earth. When the apostle said that we are built up as a spiritual building, the people are the building. Now it's in the Old Testament that was where things were physical. Noah built an ark because that was a physical error. In the New Testament, it is spiritual because the spiritual is the real deal. Unlike in the human reasoning where we think that the physical thing is the real thing, whosoever has God's mind will know that it is the spiritual thing that is the real deal. So the true ark is not a physical place, it's not a geographical location. The spiritual ark that God is building at this time is the people. Is the people. Bible say our body is the temple of God. God is not building a physical act. So that alone shows you that Bishop David Oyedepo is on the wrong path. He is not going in accordance to God's plan. He is going on the contrary. Because the apostles were building a spiritual building, a spiritual house, a spiritual ark where Christ will come and indwell, where Christ will come and live in. But this man is building a physical place. Are you saying the, are you saying the two different things? Now, I want you to watch and hear listen to bishop david oedipo talk about the ark he is building and when we get back we we'll continue the ark that god is building sir, there is no place on this earth that has that spark they have checked it the largest span in the world today is 250 or 253 now, this one is three, what? Three? 380. Wow, Jesus. That is, the engineers around the world are going through strain to have it done. Yes. Hey, that, that's beyond what anybody can ask or think. You have stayed here like um, Playboy Stadium. You have those great stadium and a stadia in uh, China. There is no that has the spot. Beyond all you can ask or think. So it becomes a global case study. You know, your church sets records and breaks them. <laughs> the new sanctuary is the largest roof structure in the history of construction in the world. The largest. The largest. It has been searched. We have looked for them. We can't find them. Not that we are looking for them to compare. We are looking for who can do what they are doing. Not one is near where God brought us. Now, when the Bible says that this earth will melt with fervent heat, a pastor is building an ark contrary to God's move. Jesus said that in my father's house are many mansions. He said, I go there to prepare a place for you, that where I am, there ye may be also. But a man who said he was sent to, to liberate you from the devil's oppression is taking your mind up, off rapture to prepare you for Armageddon. Could this be the reason why his son left? 
Well, I believe that Pastor Isaac Oyedekpo was not happy with his father's uh, distribution of the ministry. This is a man who came out condemning other pastors for handing over their ministries to their children and their wives and uh, returning it to family business. And he has a first son bearing his name exactly and who he, who he placed in charge of his ministry, the person of uh, Pastor David Oyedekpo Jr. Now, that's the perfect description of a village port calling a city kettle black. Now, throughout the whole scripture, Genesis to Revelation, you won't find one true man of God who handed over to his son. Now, Aaron was a priest. Now, priestly duty is different. Now, I'm not saying that a pastor's son cannot be a pastor. A pastor's son is a pastor, should be a pastor. So, but... When a pastor's son is made a pastor, it doesn't mean that when it comes to a major duty that God wants uh, someone to perform or the major duty that the father was performing, the son must of necessity carry out that uh, duty. Even if he, he may even meet the criteria, he may meet all the criteria, but it may not be God's perfect choice. There is no preacher, not a single one, if you, if you have any, you can show me, who never preached rapture or hellfire or whose son or wife took, off, took over from him. So who are these men eh? taking money from the people in the name of Titan offering and seed without warning them of the doom ahead? It is a tricky pattern if you ask me. They want to preach what the people love to hear because you can't preach rapture the way you ought to preach it and grow that big. You can't warn the people of hellfire and be on the world's list of richest pastors. That's just the fact. Now I know Pastor Isaac Oyedekbo have noticed the flaws in his father's ministry. If not, what we make a pastor resign, resign from a ministry. A pastor never resigns, if you ask me. Yes, a pastor can never resign. Except he believes contrary to what his father is preaching. If he still believes in his father's ministry, he can open his own ministry and still be active in his father's ministry, right? So, I'm just thinking out loud anyway. On the other hand, I believe that Pastor Isaac Oedipo is not really happy with him being appointed as a youth pastor. You understand? So, uh, he believes he would do better if he opens his own ministry, but that should not be the mindset of a pastor. The mindset of a pastor should not be you, be, you dominating, you being, you being uh, in charge of making your own money, doing your own thing. No, that should not be the mindset of a pastor. You should rather ask God, what do you want me to do? God may even send you to go and support another man's ministry. That's how we know if you are a true man of God. Not to go and open your own because you feel cheated by your father. Do you understand? Well, my advice to him is that, that is Pastor Isaac Oyedebo, is that if he is leaving his father's ministry, as he has left anyway, he should be sure he is not jumping from fire pan to fire. He should sincerely go to God alone and seek God. When I mean alone, I mean without his wife or children, without anybody beside him. He should go and seek God and know what God requires of him, like Paul did when he went to the wilderness of Arabia. Not to go and open another church where he will start extorting money from people to enrich himself and saying he's liberating them like his father. So finally, if you have anything to say about all that has been said so far, please go to the comment section and tell me what you think. I'll be responding to every single comment. So till I come your way again, I remain Brother Ruben Micah, also known as UBMC. God bless you. Ciao and goodbye.